So you can. All good. Okay. Yep. Corky, do you want to kick us off? No, that's correct, Corky. You know, I think that's that is the the key to to being successful in the Six Nations Championships. It, it, it's it's about momentum. Um, you know, we, we've, by the time we play tomorrow, um, we'll have had twelve days together, and um, you know we've taken a lot of good good learnings and preparation. Uh, what we did in the in the autumn into into this campaign, and and yeah, it's it, it is about. Um, not waiting for for things to happen, making sure that we're we're ahead of the game and and like you say, hit the ground running. Um, you know, it's crucial to to get off to a good start and, and build momentum. Have you seen you know the sharpness that you saw in Portugal in, during the period of time you were out there? Has that been translated into what you've done since you've come home? I know you haven't had a lot of time on the pitch since. No, um, we've been out for a, a captain's run this morning. Uh, but yeah, the, the work that we we put into them in in uh, Portugal. I mean, I think you travel uh, away and um, there's a there's a chance to connect with each other and a chance to um, build some friendships again after some time away. Um, but also build the continuity and and the connections in our rugby. And, and I think that was was brilliant the way the lads um, took ownership of a lot of the things that we put into place in the autumn. Um, a couple of new things that we've had to um, adapt to uh, in terms of a few law changes. Um, you know, conditions at the ruck might change a little bit, but um, above all, you know, they've they've come into into today bouncing and and um, you know excited about putting into practice uh, a lot of the hard work that they've done over the last twelve days. I think part of it is they they probably um, don't have um, you know the the depth in for, for four regions you know they're 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 strong uh, in certain areas but you know it's it's tough um, you know it's a tough playing field at the moment you know they have players that that move outside of, of Wales to play their rugby uh, and that's that's you know part and parcel of of um, of I guess being close to England and and allowing those players to to travel and and play away and come back to play for the country, history recent history has shown how regional form has com- nothing to do with uh, their 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 international performances and form and and uh, you know the, the last couple of years is is kind of testament to to how they prepare them when they come in from the regions uh, and you know they, they 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 become a really strong group and and become really. Uh, effective uh, when they put on that red jersey. So, yeah, we don't certainly don't read anything into that that regional form, Mike. You know, it, we we know over the, the recent years that that has never translated into into performances um, for their country. Cheers, man. Thanks. Good luck tomorrow. Thanks. Hi, Simon. Uh, I know you've had your captain's run this morning. Just checking, does everyone come through okay? And, and uh, the, the full squad are, are, are fit and fired, ready to go. Yep, everyone's good. Uh, yep, no issues this morning. The rain held off, so yep, we're looking uh, looking good for for tomorrow. How excited are the the, the players to be back at full Aviva? The fans obviously are after lockdown, so it's been such a long time. Uh, you know, when I have obviously yeah, November, but the Six Nations game in the full house. How excited are uh, the players to get out there? And what kind of atmosphere are you all expecting tomorrow? I think that's it's it's so important. Uh, some of these players have played 14, 15 times, but never played in front of a, a full house in a Six Nations game. I think the last time we we had a full house for a Six Nations game was against Wales a couple of years ago. So uh, yeah, it, it's it's going to be huge. You know, there's one thing playing for your country, but when there's a crowd engaged and connected to you, when you've got your family in the stands watching, uh, whether you've got whether it's your first cap or your fiftieth cap. It, it's so special, and and I don't think, you know, I think what anything what what the last couple of years has taught us is that you know players 
really haven't they're not taking that for granted anymore you know it, it is so special and and the connections that we can have with each other on the pitch how that can can connect with the crowd and and those guys uh, back home you know it makes a massive difference to to the way that they approach the game Good, thanks. Good. Just in terms of progression, what are the main differences that you see in this current Ireland team to when you first came in, say, back in 2014? Wow. That's, yeah, seems like a long time ago. <laughs> uh, you know what? I, I think every team uh, evolves and every team uh, will go through cycles of, of, of playing a certain way. I think um, under Joe, we were, um, we were incredibly successful um, at, at playing a certain way, and it was it was it was brilliant to be involved in. Um, yeah, we've we've changed maybe the approach a little bit un, under Faz, and and I think we're starting to see the the sort of rewards of that in terms of the way the players are playing a different group as well. You know, there's a lot of players that went around in 2014 that are around now. Um, you know, there's a new crop coming through. They have a of a, of a different mindset, a different appetite for the game, and I think that's starting to show in. In, in how we're playing, you know, it's it's you know every every kind of five or six years, there's a, there's probably a turnover of, of a certain number of players. Um, we've we've certainly got players that were were playing back in 2014, but the game moves on and evolves, and and I think you know we have to stay ahead of that, and and I think we're starting to to see the rewards of of, of trying to do that. Sorry, sorry. Can you? I can't. Sorry, I. You're 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 breaking up. Sorry, Brian, you're breaking up there. Can you hear me okay then? Yeah. That's better. Yep. Yeah. I just wanted to ask about the new laws, in particular the fifty twenty two. Yeah, I mean they're not. It's not new. Um, yeah, we 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 played with it for a while, but it, you know it it um it it certainly has um you know has a bearing on on how you prepare sometimes in the week in in certain situations. Uh, when the opposition has the ball in 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 their half, it, it certainly makes you you cover certain areas in, in maybe a slightly different way. But you know, it, nothing. It doesn't change too much. What it does do is obviously uh, when you're attacking, it, it does give you an opportunity if you feel the space there uh, and that you can get the ball in and hit the grass and and find the the, the touchline in the 22 from your own half. Then it gives you a a big advantage if you can if you can gain that that uh, that line out from you know 22 you know 15 meters out from the opposition try line you know there's, there are a number of times it's happened over the last um, sort of year since it's been brought in uh, it's a constant work on for everyone but it's it's not something that we're overly concerned about i think it's always been probably part of our preparations to to not allow side to to get the ball into those areas and the same in attack trying to put it there to, to try and put pressure on the opposition No, no, it doesn't make it less competitive. Um, we just got to be really smart about how we do things, and and um, you know, work with the referee, make sure that um, you know we avoid giving away needless penalties. And yeah, you know, it, it. I think we're the more clarity we can have, and the more more chance we can work with the referees and and uh, understand what they want from us. Uh, then then hopefully there's there's no issue as we move along throughout the championship. No, not at all. Um, you know, Josh is um, Josh is a, a brilliant strike runner. He does it, you know, incredibly, incredibly well for the on the wing. Um, he played at 13 for for Cardiff uh, against Toulouse um, a couple of months back. Um, so yeah, it it is um, you know it's, it's a change that they feel is is going to add to their game, and and it doesn't change too much from from our perspective. We know that they've got. A number of strike runners, Josh included, in their backline that can do damage if if we're not, um, you know, if, if we're not focused on our on our defence and and uh, trying to get the ball back. So yeah, it's it's a it's a big challenge for us in midfield, but but one that you know the lads are you know really keen to to uh, to embrace. Mistake with the early red card, which put Ireland on the back foot in that game, but arguably in the whole tournament as well. 
yeah, it's it's crucial. Um, you know, I, I think every team would would see uh, discipline as as been right at the top of the agenda in terms of uh, getting it right yourselves, forcing opposition to to give you um, field position or, or chances to to kick points through their indiscipline. Uh, so yeah, it, it it's certainly at the forefront of everyone's mind. Um, you know, we have to again, we have to work with the officials. Uh, players have a responsibility to 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 do things in a legal manner. Um, the, you know, the game is tough enough uh, these days without uh, without guys having to, to to do things outside of law. So you know, there is those mistakes and and those unfortunate uh, times when um, you know a player gets his tackle entry wrong or, or clean out wrong. Uh, there's a challenge in the air, but you know we try to um, as much as we can. You know, players and coaches try to educate and 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 try to mitigate and and try and um, reduce the amount of chances of, of those things coming back to bite you. But it, it's it's certainly at the forefront of everyone's mind. Uh, Six Nations games are always always passionate, but I mean, how do you strike that balance between being physical but not becoming ill-disciplined? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I, again, I think it's it's about you know being really accurate. Um, you know. Good habits that that you perform uh, in training, making sure that we we work hard on our techniques um, at, at the ruck in particular, at the kick chase, um, you know, and, and the, the intensity and there's there's there's, there's always going to be clashes in rugby. Uh, it's a contact sport, and there's there's guys moving uh, left and right and forward, and and yeah, there's, there's going to be times when a player gets caught out. Um, you know, I, I, I think that that those things are unavoidable, but um, the more that we can. We can uh, work hard in training to, to to mitigate those opportunities to go against us. Then, you know, the the better we'll be when it comes to getting on the right side of the law with the referee. Thanks, Victor. Cheers. Thanks, Victor. Guys, um, um, if there's, if there's, if there's, if there's, sorry, uh, Murray. Sorry, Murray. Healthy, fit, and consistent defensively, and sorry, we're going to challenge for him a wide distance. Sorry, Murray. Um, we're going to take a couple of embargo questions there now. If there's appetite for that. Say, I, sorry, Murray, I didn't quite get. So, yeah, go ahead. Anyone? Sorry, uh, sorry, I didn't hear what you said. But... Uh, my question was about Matt Hansen's defence. Sorry, um, I was just asking how has he fitted into your system, and then um, what are the challenges for him going into Test rugby defensively at White? Yeah, he's been really good, Murray. He's um, he's a Type of uh, guy that that asks a lot of questions. You know, he's in, inquisitive. He he's curious about how to do things. Um, you know, Connacht play um, play a really good defensive system, um, and there's not a huge amount of difference. Obviously, the, the speed of ball and the, the 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 sort of the runners that that might be coming down his channel might be slightly different at, at, at this level, and and maybe a step up from from what he's experienced. But um, you know. He's lucky that we've got good guys around him um, in the back line, good experience, uh, back three players um, who who help each other incredibly well to to keep working hard and, and making the right decisions. Good guys inside him as well, um, in the centres that, that again connect up and, and work incredibly hard to, to to help those guys that have come in. It's no different than any other position. You know, new guys coming in, uh, we want to make it as seamless as we can can be. Um, but Mac has been excellent. You know he's. He's, um, you know, I think he's someone that has slotted into the group really well. Um, you know, he's got a good head on his shoulders. He's a brilliant, brilliant runner, and, and you can see some from some of his work um, in the Connacht matches of late that his his defence is is right up there as well. So there'll be challenges along the way, I'm sure, um, but he's he's fitted in really well.